Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. So in this session, I shall be starting uh, topics on another module called as inter-process communication. Previous sessions, I have uh, explained you the concept of process threads and the different sh uh, scheduling algorithms. So from this session onwards, you'll be learning topics on inter-process communication. Here we need to know, and before I start this session, I request my audience to please like, share and subscribe to my channel. So here, what exactly you need to know in the introduction. So the, this session is completely about the introductory part, but it is very important. You will come across the different terms that are used here so that you'll be able to understand that the concepts that are there in future topics. So here you need to know about these two terms first, race condition and critical section. So to make you understand these two uh, terms, the first thing what I'll do is I'll give you an example wherein you will come to know, yes, is this the problem existing? We never knew that this kind of problem may happen also. So the operating system is taking care of this problem as well. And this problem is the most important. That means for this problem, the solution is a must so that the processes will give you the correct result. So we have to, we are seeing that there, there are processes that are communicating with each other. So during this uh, communication, this communication should happen in what? In a proper order. There should be some synchronization between the processes to arrive at the correct value. So we have to know about this process synchronization is a must. If the processes are not synchronized, then it will give you the wrong result. Now to understand this condition, uh, these terms, race condition, if I just read out at this point, you may not understand. A situation where more than one process access the shared resource currently and the output depends on the order of the execution. But what exactly it is, if I give an example, it will be more clear to you. Critical section is a segment of the code in a process where the shared variables are accessible by other processes also. So here, what you have to do is to understand this race condition problem. Let us take two processes, P0 and P1 is there. Okay, These two processes have got their code part written. What P0 is doing is simply P0 is reading some variable. It is updating the value or it is uh, adding some Okay, it is performing some operation with that variable and finally it is writing that value. This is the job of P0. P1 is also carrying out a similar job. It is reading a variable. It, anything you can take, even the same will not matter. Then next it is writing the value for x. Okay. So when these processes are trying to execute, one thing you notice that these processes have got a common variable. The variable is x. This is the common variable. Now, whatever is the initial value assigned for x, okay, based on that only the processes will continue their execution. Now, let us take some number initially, x is equal to some, some number I will take, x is equal to 6. If this is the initial value for x, now what process P0 will do? Suppose for the first time we will try to do in one uh, the, in a very simpler manner, process P0 is executing first and then P1. So, if that is the case, P0 will start, P0 will check the value, initial value is x, x plus 3, that is 6 plus 3, 9 and it will write the value and it becomes what? 9. Fine, this is quite simple. Then once process P0 has completed, P1 will start its execution. P1 will read the value for x. Now the value for x will be what? 9 for P1 because P0 has updated. Once the value for P1 becomes 9, P1 will read that value, 9 multiplied by 436 and it will write the value as 36. Which process has done this? This is done by P1. Okay, P0 has done this. Suppose if we try to do in a mixed fashion, like we are doing the context switching in between. Now P0 has started with a value of 6. Okay, initially it will execute this. Yeah, sorry, it will read the value for x. It will try to re, uh, carry out this computation 6 plus 3, 9. Then we will see here a context switch happens. So we have seen that context switch for a process can happen at any time. If this happens, then the charge will go to which process? P1. P1 will start reading the value for x. For P1, the value is 6 only because P0 has not updated. It has not executed its right instruction. It has only what? Computed, but it has not written the right instruction. So for P1, the value will be still 6 only. So it will carry out its job. 6 into 4 is how much? 6 into 4 is 24. It will write the value for 24. Now what P0 has done is, even though with the value for P0 was 6, P0 has not written, has not updated the value for x. So I will just put a dash here. Meanwhile, 
P1 got the control and P1 will start 6 into 4 minus 24. So, P1 will uh, compute this as well, write the value. So, P1 has got the value 24. What about P0? Now, once it completes, the, con the control comes back to P0. So, P0 will just try to execute directly this statement. It will write what it has computed earlier. So, it has computed how much 6 plus 3 as 9. So, it will write the value as 9. Okay. It will write the value as 9, which was earlier not written. Now, look here what, what is that you have noticed? You got if it is executing one after the other, this is the case. The <coughs> processes are trying to execute not in an ordered fashion, then you are getting this kind of result. In this case, what has happened is P0 got preempted here and P0 will compute from this point only. We know that any point of time when a process is preempted, it will store its variable. Sorry, it will store the next instruction to be executed in program counter. So, when it resumes, it will start from that instruction only. So, it will start from this instruction. It has already read 6, uh, six it has already read 6 plus 3, 9 and simply it will update now. So, this way we say two processes are trying to access the shade variable at the same time. Whenever there is a context switching happening between two processes, okay, the output of the uh, processes will not be consistent. So, we have to come out with a solution so that the processes get synchronized, the output of those two processes will be correct. So, that type of the situation which is resulting in inconsistent values is called as race condition. Hope you will now uh, able to understand this definition. Race condition is a situation where more than one process access the shared resource concurrently. Look at the word concurrently and the output depends on the order of the execution. Definitely depends on which order the processes are getting executed. Then now what we have to do is wherever is such code wherein more than one process can access that part of the code we have to call it as a critical section. A segment of the code in a process where the shared variables are accessible by other processes. So, every process is having what a part of the seg a code segment and that we call it as critical section. So, critical section has got what all the shared files, shared resources, shared variables. So, other processes can also access the critical section. So, you have to now come out with a solution if more than one process is trying to access the critical section at the same time, but still the output of these processes should be correct. And to carry out that, there, there are different solutions. So, to make these processes synchronized with each other, there are different solutions. We actually call this kind of problem wherein you are getting inconsistent what results. So, that part of that, uh, the problem which is arising from this kind of uh, situation is called as what? The critical section. And the problem itself, we call it as a critical section problem. So, we have to see which are the different solutions that are possible to solve the critical section problem. There are solutions based on software, there are solutions based on hardware. To start learning the solutions, the very first thing you see, every solution will have this kind of format. What is that? While true. That means this part of this, whatever you have written in this particular while loop will run infinite number of times. The process can run any number of times. What is that? There is some entry section, then followed by critical section, then followed by exit section and followed by the remaining. So, any solution in future whenever I am teaching you the solutions to solve the critical section, you will see that you will have entry section. Entry section will have certain lines of code which is always denoting or which is always indicating to other processes that that particular process is entering into critical section. It is like a kind of permission to enter into the critical section. Once the, it enters into critical section, then at the time of leaving also it is carrying out or it is executing certain lines of code that will once again indicate to other processes that this process is leaving the critical section. So, entry and exit are very important which will give what the complete indication to other processes who are interested to enter into critical section about what about the status of the process which is already in the critical section or which is trying to enter into the critical section. This remainder is unique for every process their own uh, code is written in the remainder section. But critical section is the one which is common to uh, the different processes. So, you have to see that at any point of time in the critical section, if I am using the word CS for critical section, only one process should be there in the critical section at any point of time. And that particular condition is called as mutual exclusion. There are several solutions to solve the critical. 
section problem but every solution should have what should satisfy this mutual exclusion progress and there is one third condition called as bounded weight okay fourth condition is also mentioned in tenenbaum which says that ignore the uh, number of cpus and the speed speed and cpus of the system to be ignored so that definitely when the word ignore is used we will not consider at all for any type of situation uh, solution we will check whether these three conditions are getting satisfied the first two are mandatory if that solution is satisfying these two conditions then it is a correct solution it is mandatory for that solution to satisfy this bounded weight is an optional so from here onwards from the next session when you start learning the different solutions i will explain to you whether that solution is satisfying mutual exclusion whether it is satisfying progress whether it is satisfying the bounded weight so i shall be briefly explaining you about these three conditions what is mutual exclusion what is progress and what is what do you mean by bounded weight suppose if this is the critical section mutual exclusion condition says that if one process is there in let us say p0 is in critical section the another process p1 should not enter into critical section only then what you will get consistent results so whenever p0 is accessing the shared resources or shared variables p1 cannot access so this is the first condition and definitely it is very much needed the second condition is progress progress says that a process which is outside the critical section should not block any other process which is interested to enter the critical section again so it it is not it is like this pro, p1 is not allowing process p1 p0 to enter into the critical section and p0 is not allowing the process p1 also to enter into critical section both are unable to enter into the critical situation that particular problem should not arise in a solution whichever solution is proposed to solve the critical solution there should be some progress happening like if p0 is the process which has entered into the critical section it wants to enter again it should be allowed it it wants to enter again p1 is not interested see progress says that p p0 is interested in enter into the critical section fine it came out from the critical section it wanted to enter again into the critical section then no other process which are outside the critical section should block p0 p0 should be allowed to enter it again if if p0 is interested so that condition should also get satisfied here in the solution the third one is the bounded weight no other process should wait for a longer time to enter into the critical section if that process is what trying to enter into critical section so what does uh, this particular uh, statement means if this is the critical section okay p0 is entering into the critical section p1 has made an attempt to enter into the critical section okay p0 p1 is waiting p1 is waiting so that p0 once it comes out it will enter into the critical section if p0 comes out p0 enters it again p1 will still be waiting then in the second round p0 comes out p0 enters it again into the critical section p1 is still waiting so p1 waiting time how long p1 has to wait so there should be some limit for a process to wait to enter into the critical section if p1 is made making an attempt to enter into the critical section it should get its turn quickly it should not wait forever if p1 is not interested that is a different situation that's a different scenario if p1 is not interested p0 can enter again and again if p0 is interested so this third situation is called as the bounded weight so from the next session onwards we shall see the different uh, solutions here there are various solutions one is using the lock variable the another is using the disabling interrupts so then you have uh, the tsl instruction then you have the Uh, peterson solution to understand the peterson solution you should know a uh, solution using the turn variable you should know a solution using the flag variable then you will be able to understand the peterson solution and whether these solutions are only designed for two processes what if more than two processes are trying to enter into the critical section so hope this session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take care